My name is Lauren Regan and I'm from the University of Surrey. Um, you can connect with me online if you'd like, Lauren Regan 01 um, on LinkedIn. Um, time's precious up here today, so I'm happy to answer any questions over lunch or anything. Um, and yeah, I'm here to talk to you today about our, what we call um, captured content. Oh, this is not moving, hold on one sec, sorry. There we go. Yeah, so we have something at um, Surrey University called the captured content policy. Um, and that was created by the Technology Enhanced Learning Department in 2000, July 2018 um, and was rolled out to staff. And staff were encouraged to speak to their, um, sorry, departments were encouraged to speak to the staff in their schools and departments and also to speak to their students. And capture content refers to two things. It refers to standard lecture capture but also any audiovisual content that can be used in teaching as part of flipped or blended learning. Um, so that did help to be able to open up the conversation. So schools and departments were asked to consult with their staff and students on what would be the best form of captured content to use within their discipline. Um, and to outline that, they outlined their approach to the policy and they shared that with the students so students know what to expect in their modules. And to help implement the policy, the TEL department employed three new digital learning coordinators, um, to, one for each faculty, to go out and speak to the staff um, about how they're going to choose to implement this and to help them to write their approaches. I'm the digital learning coordinator in the Faculty of Arts and Social Science, um, and we're now about um, just over a year into the policy. Our contracts are just two-year contracts, so it's a two-year plan, um, and we're about halfway through that at the moment. Um, so initially there were two main obstacles that I faced when I went out to speak to staff about how they're going to use captured content in their teaching and what they're going to share with students. So firstly there, there were staff that just didn't know, just didn't understand and didn't know how to implement the policy. And then I'm sure you've all faced a second group of people, staff that just simply just didn't want to. They just weren't interested. Um, you know, my teaching's fine, I've been teaching for X amount of years, why do I need to suddenly do something different? Um, there was a um, a bit of contention around the um, survey that created, that, that started this conversation with students. It was a little bit of a Brexit because it was kind of 50-50 and there were conversations about how many students actually asked for it and are we just kind of pandering to what they're asking for rather than what they need and what might be um, pedagogically sound. Um, so it's definitely helped that we had the policy that was more than just lecture capture because like I said before that helped to open up that conversation so staff that came and were just like I don't see the point of recording lectures that's absolutely fine what else can we do and what other ways might recording some of your teaching or content benefit your students in some way um, but it was clear at the beginning that initially there was just some the misunderstanding about what the term actually meant um, and also some of the early adopters were from things uh, schools like the veterinarian school or engineering so they're quite practical hands-on subjects and some of the other disciplines found it difficult to understand how video might be used in their what they refer to as more academic uh, disciplines um, so it's also really important to remember as well it became very um, apparent to me that it's really important to remember that we're asking some staff that have never used technology before that don't need to use technology in their day-to-day -day lives other than just powerpoint slides um, so there was some you know genuine fear and you know some people don't want to stand up and be videoed and that's actually okay and we do actually encourage for students to create the captured content as well um, and for them to use external resources you know it doesn't need to be something where they go and create a ton of resources if there's an expert that's already spoken and got videos on YouTube then why not just link to them um, so to help staff to consider how they might implement the policy what we did was we broke down the examples that we have so far into six areas um, where videos might be used to help students with their learning. First area is problem solving, um, also in flipped learning um, examples. Assessment is quite used quite heavily now for assessment, revision, feedback, and finally for PTY, for the professional training years. Um, so I'm just going to give you a few examples of how that's been used so far. So problem solving examples range from filming live action um, simulation. So we've had some staff, nursing staff that came in and did a role play um, of a scenario when they want students, that students themselves have to act out those scenarios, but they went through the key areas that they should do when they go through a consultation with a, a patient and then students can obviously re-watch that. So the problem solving is just to help students to understand how best to solve discipline related problems. Um, videos are used as a flip 
learning tool much more now where staff will um, provide students with content and then they have the sessions um, that are more active, more active learning sessions like we've spoken about before where students will actually get involved in task-based activities rather than just the factual content. Um, assessment videos are now becoming the norm with staff. What they'll do is they'll either record the session where they talk to students about <coughs> assessment or they'll create a separate video um, just to try and reduce the number of questions that are asked around assessment and obviously students can then go back and review those just um, in real time as well. Um, and also uh, students are being asked to create videos as assessments now as well, which is also good to see. And with the data for lecture capture highlighting that students normally watch lecture capture videos around revision, what some staff are choosing to do instead of the hour long recorded lecture is to do a 10 minute summary each week and they can then focus the content on what they want the students to pick out of that lecture but they can also refer to things so we use um, Poll Everywhere um, which is the EBS system where students can ask questions at the end of a, a lecture and then lecturers can actually go and do the 10 minute summary based on the things that they've told them that they struggled with understanding so it's a little bit more directed. Um, also now when releasing grades on, um, on our virtual learning environment, Surrey Learn, what some staff are now doing is rather than just releasing the grades so they just see the numbers, they're actually releasing a video which talks about what they've seen, the patterns that they've seen as a cohort and explaining to students how they can actually use their feedback to help them to improve their grades. That's also a great way if we've got large cohorts of students we hear that they kind of miss out on that personalised feeling, they don't get that one to one time. So releasing a video of the academic talking about how they did in their assessments is a great way as well to increase that um, personalised feel um, so students actually feel like they're connecting with their, their lecturers. Um, and then finally for the PTY um, uh, professional training year we actually have um, a staff member who is responsible in our Surrey Business School for organising the personal training uh, professional training year and what she's planning on doing is actually encouraging students to create videos whilst they're out in that year so we can create an online community where students are sharing that experience to try and keep that community feel because what they worry about is they go out for the year and they don't feel connected to the university anymore. She's also planning that when she sends the timely emails um, with information about their professional training year that there's actually a video there as well so that again students are seeing they're not just receiving an email from the university they're actually receiving a video with the person that they recognise to help them feel that connection. Um, and finally, for the second half of my presentation, I've actually got a video. I recently went around to the staff um, in my faculty asking them how they felt about captured content, how they've used it, and what their students think. And this is what they said. Capture content for me is definitely more than lecture capture, which is actually something that I am not currently using. I try and look at it as using lots of different media and ways of teaching and providing resources to the students. For my students, uh, it means YouTube videos, it means audio files. For me, it's about using uh, the technology to try different ways of creating spaces for students to learn. The key word for me is content. What I'm trying to do is find different ways of making that content come to life for them, making it accessible for them, but also not dumbing it down for them and making content that can link to other things in their learning. The specific area that I've used it hasn't been so much for lectures, but for feedback on uh, a coursework assessment. I have used it for recording lectures as well. I'm less impressed by that. It hasn't had the negative effect I was expecting on attendance. I'm teaching a quantitative methods module for first year uh, sociology, criminology and media communication students um, and I don't really like statistics so I try to find ways to make statistics a bit more interesting. So one thing that I did was to use external videos that I found on YouTube. I also made my own videos um, using um, Explain Everything. We did some exercises in class uh, with the whiteboard and I realized that that information was not in the slides and so I went back to my office and I redid the exercises uh, using Explain Everything uh, and then I put the videos on, uh, on Savvy Learn.
uh, for my students. This semester I've got a final year module called Leadership which I run with 130 of the final years within our school and we get the students to create a podcast um, in groups which they can submit at any time with any uh, multimedia ranges and I complement that with the delivery of things like um, selective podcasts that we use for the students to really enhance their learning on difficult areas. I'm in the process of creating uh, an audio map. What I'm hoping to get out of the Google map is basically uh, a one-stop shop place really is what I'm framing it as where they can look on the Google map and they can click on parts of the world and listen to um, audio examples or audio visual examples maybe of accents from around the world. The main way I've used it is by using audio clips and I played a piece of music at the beginning of a lecture as students were entering the lecture theatre. And although I played that music to kind of make people feel a bit more comfortable about arriving to the lecture, there was also a secondary reason for it. So after I'd been delivering the lecture for a very short time, it was obviously introducing the theme and the topic and the aims of the session. I then went back and played a very short snippet of the same music from the beginning and said, can anybody tell me how, why I've selected that particular piece of music and why it's relevant to today? The students that were able to make that connection, I just gave them a suite. I think they thought it was a bit corny, but they liked it and they definitely liked the suite. <laughs> Mostly what they've done is they've asked me whether I'm going to record the next one. Um, if they didn't value it at all, they probably wouldn't say, are you going to do another one of those? And they have done. So I take that to be the, the positive feedback. Largely, I think they see it as a positive. One of the challenges, though, is that I, I think sometimes they think that that's enough. And it's about making sure you connect the capture content with what you're doing in the contact time. Otherwise, uh, it becomes a, a distraction rather than a real aid. I think. I'll be more confident to try different things going forwards. And I think, yeah, we need to constantly innovate and, and read what's going on in the classroom, read the feedback, ask for feedback verbally, check what's going on all along. And I think it's adapting practice from that feedback and what we see working or not working. I think the knowledge economy that we now live in demands ever more ways in which we can uh, uh, package up um, our messages and our information. I think one of the things that universities generally um, have to wise up to is the way that the internet um, has thrown down a kind of gauntlet to them uh, because it's very easy now to access sometimes really quite high level information as well as lots of things that I really would rather they didn't bother looking at. Um, so it's about marshalling that. If I want my students to have a coherent experience as a group, which I do, I have to somehow corral that and stop students from wandering off into the internet and never to be seen again.